year was 2013, and Jackson Palmer was a software engineer at the Adobe Systems Marketing Department in Sydney, Australia. He saw the insanity of the ICO boom and he wanted to make fun of all of the crypto bros by apparently becoming one. He bought Dogecoin.com and made a simple user interface featuring a coin with the Doge meme on it. In Comic Sans text, it said Dogecoin is the cryptocurrency favored by Shiba Inus worldwide. Billy Marcus, who at the time was an IBM software engineer, reached out to Jackson Palmer after noticing his website, and together they decided to make Dogecoin a reality. Billy took the Bitcoin code and he copied it. Using Control F, they searched for all of the mentions of Bitcoin in the code and replaced it with Dogecoin. Then as a final touch, they changed the font to Comic Sans and on December 6th of 2013, Dogecoin was born. Actually, it was really fort from Lucky Coin, which was actually a fort from Litecoin, which was based on Bitcoin, but you get the idea. In three days, starting on December 19th, not even a month after its creation, Dogecoin jumped by 300%. Billions of Dogecoin per day were trading hands, and Dogecoin had officially entered the crypto mania that it was invented to lampoon. The coin named Dogecoin began its ascendance. It was mighty, it was brilliant, it tapped into the hearts and minds of people all over the world. And this one tool brought the nation's central banks and financial cartel to its knees. This new underdog's trip to the moon would be short-lived though, because China decided to ban Chinese banks from investing into Bitcoin, and Bitcoin and the rest of the market took a hit from this bad news. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Then on December 25th, the online cryptocurrency wallet by the name of Doge Wallet was hacked, and millions of Dogecoin were stolen. The hacker got into the Dogecoin wallet platform's file system and routed all the transactions to a single address. Many people were devastated, but the Dogecoin Reddit community came together and started a fundraiser named Save Dogemas. They were donating coins and helping Sheebs who had their Dogecoin stolen from them during the holiday season. This was just the beginning of the show of goodwill to come from the Dogecoin community, though. To our Dogecoin in the Reddit community, thank you for your generous support. The Dogecoin Reddit community created the Dogecoin Foundation, and in January of 2014, they raised $30,000 in Dogecoin to send the Jamaican bobsled team to the Olympics. The very next month in February, they raised $25,000 through Doge for Kids, helping to supply service dogs for blind and autistic kids. Doge was on a roll, and again the next month in March, they started the Doge for Water campaign, raising almost $32,000 worth of Doge to dig wells and bring clean drinking water to children in Africa. Now our PayPal. Its community members were looking out for one another and for other people in need. The people couldn't get enough, and soon Dogecoin became known as the people's cryptocurrency. It's just the beginning. It could be a new international currency for the world. <laughs> this one humble image of the dog, just one single animal, more powerful than all the governments in the world combined. We've got a brilliant future, thanks mostly to Dogecoin. It was a beautiful community doing beautiful things, but they didn't miss out on a chance to get loud. Who could forget the time that they raised $55,000 to sponsor a NASCAR, also in March of that same year. It was, yes, $55,000, which I believe was like 67 million Dogecoin that they raised in about five or six days, so it was incredible. The number 98 car known as Moon Rocket was driven by Josh Wise and was set to cross the finish line in Talladega on May 4th. And it's the Doge car uh, machine for Josh Wise and a group of people on reddit.com that are NASCAR fans crowdfunded this sponsorship for Phil Parsons Racing and Josh Wise today. Yep, I looked it up on the old Google machine and uh, it's quite a deal he's got going on here. He could turn into something really big. Thanks so much, everyone at uh, Reddit, Dogecoin. Unbelievable. But one NASCAR didn't make enough noise, so the community members would get together and throw FM transmitter parties where someone would transmit music through an FM transmitter and anyone in the Dogecoin community who wanted to join the party could just show up with a radio and that way they could take over a location with everyone playing the same music. They would take over train stations and other makeshift venues, tipping each other with Dogecoin and coordinating meetups with walkie talkies. One night they even put a big doge head over the Wall Street bull and stood around chanting up with the dog and down with the bull. Up with the dog, down with the bull, up with the dog, down with the bull. 
In January, the trading volume of Dogecoin had actually surpassed that of Bitcoin and all the rest of cryptocurrencies combined, and Dogecoin was growing like crazy. I mean, I don't know what fucking Dogecoin is. Much wow, hello, I don't know, but I mean, they're everywhere. Dogecoin, what, what is that? Why, why do I need them? Where, where do they come from? I saw the meme, but the fucking coin? Uh, I'm confused. I can't buy fucking anything here without the damn Dogecoin. What the hell is that shit? The people love Dogecoin, and it looked like if Dogecoin could continue down this charitable path, then maybe that path really would lead to the moon. But behind the scenes, this whole time something dark was unfolding in the shadows that would bring the community to its knees and cause the creators to completely abandon the project. As it turned out, one of the biggest financial contributors to the Dogecoin Foundation was an anonymous Dogecoin whale who in December had the idea for a crypto exchange named Moolah. He made a website and adopted a Reddit profile with the same handle, u slash moolah underscore, and he became one of the most active members of the Dogecoin Reddit community. He wasn't just there for memes though. In February, he revealed that his name was really Alex Green and he was there to make Dogecoin available to the masses. He would donate tens of thousands of dollars to the Dogecoin fundraisers I mentioned earlier, and he funded all kinds of parties and events for the Dogecoin community. He was a leader among the Sheebs and the community was glad to have the help. He was practically a Dogecoin hero and so in March, when he had Moolah officially registered as a UK company, he asked the community to invest in his new crypto exchange platform and the people were happy to. Now he was going to make it easier for people to buy, sell, and trade Dogecoin. He was going to be the shepherd to lead this community of sheeps past meme status and make Dogecoin the true people's cryptocurrency. Nothing could stop Dogecoin now, but there was just one thing. No one had met Alex in person or even knew what he looked like. He was like the great Gatsby, throwing parties and making friends, but no one knew who he was or where he got his money. No one's met him. They say he's third cousin to the Kaiser, second cousin to the devil. It wasn't that out of the ordinary though. This is the internet and crypto is supposed to be kind of anonymous. Plus, no one really knows anyone on Reddit anyway, and Alex had been so cool giving all of his money to help the community grow. He was one of the most respected members of the community, so why shouldn't anyone trust him to build a platform for the people to trade Dogecoin on? Alex raised more than $750,000 from the Dogecoin Reddit community, and he started hiring customer service representatives and developers from within the community as well. Moolah was becoming super popular among Sheebs, and people started pouring their Dogecoin into the platform because now they could exchange their Doge for dollar bills and they could trade with Sheebs with ease. But Alex wasn't done yet. He had big plans for what to do with the money he raised from the community, like developing a Dogecoin ATM. After he started Moolah in July, he even bought another exchange called MintPal. Things were moving fast, and meanwhile Jackson and Billy were getting super suspicious of Alex because he was making some really big moves but even through all of these developments, no one, not even his own employees, had seen Alex's face. He was pretty much taking over, and no one had even met him. So, on April 30th, Jackson and a Dogecoin Foundation associate and hero named Ben Dornberg got together and convinced Alex to finally do a face reveal, but only to them on a private Skype call. They just wanted to put their minds at ease and actually start working together as a team to bring Dogecoin to mainstream investors. Together, they would make sure that no one saw Dogecoin as a joke ever again. But that was never even what Jackson and Billy wanted, because the whole creation of Dogecoin was supposed to be a troll in the first place. So obviously, the Skype call was a troll as well. And someone recorded the whole thing. Hello. 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 I couldn't resist. <laughs> They released it to the public, and now everyone knew what Alex really looked like. Everything was fine, and the community could finally move on. Ultimately, the only thing that Ben and I exist here to do is to protect the community. Except they couldn't, because the Daily Dot ran a news article about the situation using a screenshot of the Skype call between Alex and the Dogecoin team. The article said that Moolah had Dogecoin by the collar, and it looked like things couldn't get much worse. Right. Well, so I would be, I would be very happy to pay for the time of any of your previous security audit companies to no, provide no, no. a testimonial. Clearly, no. I, I think I've now said that three right. times. And I'm just asking why. Any other company by now would have hung up this call and told you to fuck off. In the Skype call, Ryan had threatened to sue the Dogecoin Foundation if they caused him any trouble, and it looked like Ryan had the whole community held hostage. Once it was a problem and caused trouble, 
in any way against the company, I'll be quite honest, Ben, you'll be dragged through a court of law so hard you will not know what hit you. I highly suggest that you seek the advice of a lawyer before you do a single thing. The laws in the US and the UK in regards to defaming a company are very draconian. If you say a single thing bad about a company without a shred of proof, you're fucked. This was really brutal to watch, and Alex and his partner spent about an hour threatening Jackson and Ben, telling them that the community pretty much hates them and that they had chosen his side already. There's a reason that there are 20 guns spread around my house that are within the like, furthest one away from me right now. The reason is he likes guns. All is in your court. You want to fuck up your life by doing something stupid, by all means go ahead, because at the end of the day, it doesn't mean a thing to me. Our company is going very well. I'll be quite honest, we're far bigger than the foundation. I do not need the foundation's backing, neither does my company. The foundation versus Moolah. That is not what public sentimentality is. And Ben, you can roll your eyes all you want. That is what the public are saying. And as you've seen, the public is not siding with you. If you look at public sentimentality, the vast majority of the community, investors and non-investors alike, are entirely with us on this. Our investors have all posted, essentially telling you to shut up. Ben grilled Alex trying to get him to prove that he's not a fraud, and Alex accused them of harassment, telling them they're totally incompetent. To me, you're a random person with no experience in this sector. You mm. don't fully understand digital currency, as you yourself have said. You made a hash of the last major thing you were involved with, Save Dogmans, you made a huge hash of. That was nothing sort of short of moronic at the end of the day. Mm. Um, I don't know what experience you have in any of these sectors. Do you have any history of you know, business within the compliance or legal regulatory arenas? I'm assuming no. Because I'll be honest, it makes the foundation look like a bunch of kids. You are now falling to the realm of harassing a company and its officers. Do you understand the legal ramifications of that? I understand that. I, I may well be an idiot, but I'm just saying if, if I'm causing such a headache, this is a very simple thing I'm willing to pay for. It's a simple thing to fix. I just ignore you. It's that simple. Even after Alex threatened to sue, though, Ben continued grilling him and fighting for the community. Yeah, it just seems very suspicious to me. It seems like a very... That's why I'm sorry. You have no... <laughs> You have no experience to say a thing like that. You're welcome to say what you want, Ben. And at the end of the day, if you step a foot out of line, we will, myself and Landon will drag you through a call. That is your call. Here's what I'm saying. If a security company contacts me and says that they've done an audit previous to today, I will go away. You will never hear from me with any concerns again. I'm happy to pay for their time to do so. And if, and if I don't do that, I will just sit and you have to I will just ignore you. And you will make yourself look like a fool. And you'll make the community kind of go against you more. I also have it confirmed from a Reddit administrator, if you publicly demand personal information of me, when I'm in my company, your account will be banned. That's it totally fine. Them. Jackson tried to laugh off the situation, acting as if his mind had been put at ease. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, it's legal psychology, essentially. It's the study of the criminal mind and the psychosis surrounding it, why people do bad things. I think I think we just need to, like, let, let's... let's put this behind us, I think it helps not everyone. Let's, let's, let's just... Okay. Uh, oh, that's cute. But you can definitely see the pain in his eyes as he slowly realizes that Alex has complete control over the situation. And I may or may not have shed a tear for him while I watched. Then about a week after that article ran, Jackson got a call from a lady saying that Alex Green was her ex-boyfriend, and he was actually a serial scammer, but that was just the tip of the iceberg. Because for one thing, his name wasn't actually even Alex Green. It was really Ryan Kennedy. This guy had an entire Encyclopedia Dramatica article written about him, running Magic the Gathering scams and running fake web hosting deals. And it gets much worse because he was also caught at anime conventions multiple times, spying on women's dressing rooms, and he was even a convicted rapist. Then in mid-October, Moolah announced that they were going bankrupt out of nowhere because MintPal had apparently been hacked and all of the keys were stolen. All of the money was gone and no one was getting anything back. Not just Moolah, but MintPal too. Millions of dollars were gone just like that, and the community was taken completely off guard. The community was reeling. It looked like this guy was a real dirtbag and he had probably not actually been hacked, but he was really just taking advantage of everyone the whole time. A few days later when Alex admitted that his real name really was Ryan Kennedy, the community was totally devastated and many people lost faith in the project. Ryan bailed on the community, disappearing and making off with everyone's profits. Syscoin, another cryptocurrency project that had invested in Moolah, decided to sue over lost funds, but no one could find Ryan not even the cops. He had disappeared, and some people were speculating that maybe he had even died. Eventually though, he did show up again when he was arrested in the UK for his crimes and convicted for what he did to the Dogecoin community. 
I'm just kidding. He was actually arrested for again. I guess actual pieces of shit don't have the capacity to learn from their actions. Oh well, he was sentenced to 11 years, and now at this very moment, maybe, just maybe, his celly is giving him a taste of his own grape-flavored medicine without the G. You look like you could use a delicious fruity beverage! Hope you like, cause I've got a grape in the mouth! Unfortunately, the community has never been the same, and since the Alice Green incident, Sheebs have been more skeptical of each other and less willing to give freely with their Dogecoin. The days of fundraisers and community funded parties were over, and as the fun left the community, so did the people who made Dogecoin great in the first place. Community members just like you lost faith in the project, and many have not returned to this day. Jackson Palmer and Billy Marcus saw the community become toxic, and in 2015, they stepped away from the project, handing control to trusted community members, and Jackson donated all of his Dogecoin to charity. Neither Jackson or Billy made a significant profit from their creation, and they both stepped away from crypto. Billy has since returned but holds little power over the project, and Jackson still hates his creation and all of cryptocurrency to this day. Many people think that Jackson hates Dogecoin and cryptocurrency because he missed out on an opportunity to make life-changing money, but that was never what he was after in the first place. I'm sure he has some regrets about the money he could have made, but I think the real reason that Jackson hates Dogecoin is because it was his creation and he was having fun with a beautiful community full of sheep. But then some asshole who didn't represent the vision that he had for Dogecoin came into the community and Jackson had to sit back and watch as everyone gave this new guy the power to take over the project and turn it into something that represented evil. I feel for Jackson because I too have seen greed take over this community, but I believe that these are just growing pains for Dogecoin because Dogecoin still has huge potential to do great things and it has a community full of beautiful and generous sheeps who want to see positive change in the world. If we can just get back to our roots and focus more on having fun and helping others, then I know Dogecoin's best days are still ahead of it. We do have to be serious about the direction of the project and the development of the network, but we can't alienate the community that has made Dogecoin great by letting greed take over. Jackson, if somehow you see this, I'm super sorry that that happened to you, and thank you so much for trying to protect the Dogecoin community. I hope that anyone watching this can rally around Jackson and realize that he's just a good person who had something bad happen to him. Dogecoin wouldn't even exist without him, and I think we all owe him a debt of gratitude. Dogecoin to the moon, baby. Let's go. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to hit that like button. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I'm, I'm very unsatisfied, and unless Jackson gets some kind of proof of your identity, Alex, I don't think you're Alex Green. We will have to make a public press release. We're now being accused by your foundation that I'm not a real person. If you publicly say that, I will drag your ass to the court for defamation and you'll be fucked. That is your choice. I probably won't have to say anything publicly because you'll be doing a press release soon. So when when should I expect the press release? Probably about the same time that you'll get anything from us, which is when Never. we feel like it. Oh, okay.